Good evening, dear parents and teachers. Warm greetings to you all from DPS Bangalore East and a warm welcome as well for today's session on adolescent mental health, the vital role of parents. World Mental Health Day is observed on 10th October every year with the overall objective of raising awareness of mental health issues around the world and mobilizing efforts in support of mental health. Today, our daily lives have changed as a result of COVID-19 pandemic. Students are adapting to take classes from home with little contact with teachers and friends. People with mental health conditions are facing a challenge, experiencing even greater social isolation than before. On top of it, it is very difficult to manage the grief when we lose our loved ones, sometimes without being able to say goodbye. Never have children been asked not to play outdoors. Teachers never thought that they would be a class teacher and not see the child physically. Never have parents been with the children at home all day without having to rush to school and office in the morning. These are new to all of us and managing this change is difficult for you and for me. So think of what the child too is going through. It is expected that the need for mental health and psychosocial support will substantially increase in the coming months and years. Investment in mental health programs at the national and at the international level is now more important than it has ever been. Today, we are delighted to have with us Dr. Preeti Galagali. She is a gold medalist in MD Pediatrics and has also done her postgraduate diploma in Adolescent Pediatrics. She has also undertaken special training in child and adolescent mental health. She has conducted many teaching programs on adolescence medicine. She has been the guest faculty for training senior medical officers in adolescent health care. Her research works and publications touch upon topics regarding adolescent issues, care and counseling. She has practiced in many seminars, sorry, participated in many seminars and conferences as coordinator, convener, and faculty. She's a member for various associations like the Indian Academy of Pediatrics, Indian Medical Association, and also the Indian Academy for Pediatrics Bangalore. We are really, really delighted to have Dr. Preeti with us. Thank you so much, Doctor, for sparing your valuable time today with us and enlightening us on the importance of mental health, especially for our students. Over to you, Doctor. Thank you, Manila. And I thank the management of DPS and all the parents for being here today and making this World Mental Health Day extremely meaningful for not only me, but for all those who are here attending this session. You just heard Madam Manila saying that the Corona pandemic has thrown challenges to all of us, to our physical well-being, our psychosocial well-being, even our digital well-being. And yes, it is often said, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. And this is also gives us an opportunity to show up with our resilient skills, to show that we are up to it to face the challenges of life. So I would like you as parents to be very, very aware of the fact that though there are difficulties right now, let us take this as an opportunity to build up resilient skills in our children. You all know the corona pandemic 
has triggered fear, anxiety, uncertainty in children. And to share with you a few cases, one young boy for whom I was doing telecounseling, he said, doctor, please don't tell my mother. All my friends, most of them, I've had fights with them online because I have not been able to meet them in person. And now out of the 10 group of friends, I'm only left with one. I do not feel like living. And look, doctor, I did self-harm. I scratched myself with a blade yesterday because I felt so sad. The second child said, though I am a school topper, the online classes are so boring, doctor. I know I want to become a doctor. I have to appear, appear for the neat entrance exam, but I simply don't feel like studying. The third boy said in a telecounseling session, doctor, my relationship with my parents has worsened. They keep telling me not to use my digital devices. Yes, I am doing online classes, but they should also understand that it is my only source of entertainment. And yes, my father beats me up every day. So you can understand that what challenges this corona pandemic has thrown to the adolescents in particular, we would love them to be laughing, smiling. Don't we all love them like that? But what has happened now? They don't have enough exercise. There's disordered eating on the rise. Yes, they are getting somewhat dejected, addicted to the digital devices. Some of them are even getting cyber bullied because they're spending so much time online. And yes, they are sometimes getting on the nerves of their parents. There are a lot of physical abuse and also emotional abuse going on, which is upsetting the parents. I know the parents are under stress as well. Some of the adolescents are going getting into depression, even taking up drugs and even thinking of self-harm. And this is actually nothing new. This is nothing new because adolescents, when they're often stressed, they do not have a strong stress response. They do not have a mature stress response and they often choose unhealthy responses to stress. As parents, we have to guide them how to remain mentally healthy, even when there is so much stress around. I'm sure you must be taking very good care of their physical health, but to just mention physical, psychosocial, mental, emotional, spiritual, and digital health are all interrelated. Yes, of course, this is the World Mental Health Day today. And the theme this year is mental health for all, greater investment and greater access to mental health care. And that's the reason we all are here today. And we hope, not only today, but we hope that the lessons that we learn today, we will carry them out, not only tomorrow, but throughout our life. So who's an adolescent? Adolescents form 22% of the Indian population. Some it's an individual who's no longer a child, but not yet an adult. I'm sure you all relate with this definition. WHO says it is the age between 10 to 19 years, but lately there has been some controversy and we will talk a little bit about that when we talk about the development of the brain. One of the features of adulthood is a complete mental development. And it is now well-known fact that the brain does not fully mature until the late 20s. So is now the adolescent age between 10 to 24? There's a lot of debate going on. You all know this is a period of rapid physical and psychosocial changes. And changes are always tough to handle, even for adults and more so for the adolescents. And we all know what the pandemic change has done to all of us. And what is mental health? We often talk about mental health. What is it? WHO says it is a state of well-being in which an individual realizes his or her own ability, can cope with the normal stresses of life and can work productively and is able to make a contribution to the community. And I think when I, when I talk about this definition of mental health, this also becomes the goal for parenting. Is the goal for parenting topping the class? Is the goal for parenting always standing first in a game? Is the goal for pro parenting 
always standing first in a project. I don't think you all agree with this. The goal of parenting is the child is happy, you are happy, the child achieves according to his potential. He does not harm himself, neither does he harm the society. And that exactly is what the goal of parenting and that is all what is mental health about. We would love to have adolescents with us in such a beautiful, heartwarming family picture. And we wish that this picture stays forever. But sometimes the reality is not like this. We have parents pulling the adolescents to their side and the adolescent is getting pulled more so by the peers. And by the way, this is normal adolescent development. After all, how long are we going to be alive with our children as parents? They have to form connections with the society and hence it is important for them to form a bonding with their peers. We have to help them to choose the right kind of friends. I often see parents almost banning friendships, especially during the time of exams. Please don't do that. That pushes the adolescent into sadness and the need for a peer alliance is normative in this phase. Adolescents often are known not to listen to their parents. Yes, that is also normative because there are bits for autonomy. They are growing up into independent human beings. That is what we want them to be. So they may not agree with whatever you say. They may not be your Xerox copy. As a parent, you have to take it easy, listen to them, negotiate your demands, and do it in a very respectful and engaging ways. And when they say, I don't want to talk to you, please don't take it personally. It is just a phase. Your opinion matters to them a whole lot. Give them some room and get back talking to them after some time. But yes, disrespectful behavior and bad language should not be tolerated at any time. Let's take a quick flashback. Let's think about our parents, their parenting, our adolescents. I hope that throughout this presentation, you will be in touch with your adolescents. Think of the best memories that you have had. And think, I, I, I presume and I wish this was an offline session and we could have a, you know, a, 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 a live interaction. But for now, I can just imagine the best memories would be the very joyful ones. And the worst would be when you would have been left all alone. So the same thing holds good for adolescents, though they may behave a little, I would put it in quotes, not so well, but still they love to bond with their parents, just like we did love to bond with our parents when we were adolescents, in spite of them beating us sometimes and even scolding us. But that doesn't mean that we beat our adolescents. So we do also understand that each family is unique and so is each adolescent. Hence, what I tell you today, please put them in your toolbox and make a customized machine, the customized machine of parenting according to your needs, according to your values, according to your culture. I'm just here to share with you the science of parenting and probably a little bit of the art. As we already discussed, the goals of parenting are very, very clear, but who really teaches parenting techniques? And I'm sure we learned most of our parenting techniques from our parents. And I think that is the main source. And what are the other sources? There are friends, there are online classes, there, is, there are online articles, there are magazines available. And who teaches parenting? But I think it is time that we see our parenting techniques from a professional. Your pediatrician is the best person to teach you parenting techniques. And when should parenting coaching begin? Any guesses here? No, parenting does not become, does not start in the adolescent period. It in fact starts when two individuals think of becoming parents. That is the time when parenting coaching should become, should begin and the parenting coaching is actually lifelong. You, as long as you are alive, you never cease to become a parent once you are a parent. 
And yes, there is no higher calling than being a parent. And please remember the end result of parenting is the parent, not the child. So we have lots of things to learn from our children. So what I will do in the next few minutes is to take you through important aspects of adolescence so that it helps you to manage the current pandemic now and even later when the pandemic is over. So we'll talk about the importance of adolescence, what is the normal development, what are the challenges of parenting adolescents, what are the nuts and bolts, what are the topics with which you should be discussing with your adolescent child, and and what are the flag signs of mental distress in adolescent when you should seek mental health professionals help immediately why invest in adolescent health you all will agree with me that there is a triple benefit as i said before 22 percent of our population is adolescents so if they are healthy healthy india now they are going to become adults in the future they India would remain healthy in the future as well. And needless to say that India would be healthy even in the future generations. So definitely there is a triple investment here. There is a phenomena called tracking high risk behavior like unhealthy eating, smoking, and even sexual promiscuity is known to track into adulthood. Parental attachment school connectedness, spirituality, and religiosity are the strongest protective factors against high-risk behavior. By the way, in India, the top cause of adolescent mortality is suicide. That's rather sad, and that is a high-risk behavior. In the world, the top cause of adolescent mortality is road traffic accidents. Again, this can be easily prevented if the parents could talk to their children at the right time when to really start driving a motorized vehicle. Let me start with this case. This mother came to me and said, my 15 year old son, since the past one year, questions rules, sometimes answers back, does not keep his room clean, changes his hairstyle every month, does not come for family functions, spends most of his free time with friends, sleeps late and gets up late, but doctor, he's doing well in school and sports. Do you think I need to see a psychiatrist? I'm really fed up. So what do you think as a parent? What is abnormal here? I think most of you have guessed it that this adolescent Though the mother has so many complaints, is actually functioning very well, both in school and sports and is friendly. So this adolescent straight away, we can rule out a mental disorder. An adolescent who continues to function well in life definitely does not have a mental disorder. What he is undergoing are the normative changes of adolescents and parents need help and also the adolescent needs help and counseling how to cope up with these changes so that the family environment is very conducive you all know there are rapid changes in growth they gain height they change their body structure some of them develop pimples and yes boys develop beards girls develop breasts and this is sometimes disturbing the important point to remember in the physical growth is that the development of breasts precedes the start of menstruation or periods by the age by two years. So usually the development of breasts starts between eight to 10 years and the periods start at around 10 to 12 years. But in the boys, the first sign of they attaining puberty is actually testicular growth, which cannot be assessed by a parent, and that has to be assessed by only a pediatrician. So that is the first sign of puberty. But having said that, some of the boys, due to the excessive production of semen, which starts a couple of months after hitting puberty, is called wet dreams. 
and they may wet their bed sheets at night due to the excessive secretion of semen which is absolutely normal it's a normal part of growth we all understand the psychological changes and parents often think oh my child what has happened to him the a child who has never bothered about how he looks now spends so much time in front of the mirror but spending a little bit more a few minutes more than previously is quite okay because adolescence for them body image is everything but if this adolescent refuses to go to school is obsessed about how he looks then it is probably an indication of a mental disorder adolescents are very creative they can think very differently and when you tell them for example i want you to come back home before it gets dark please give them the reasons unless you give them reasons they are not going to follow your instructions so remember this is a slight change in parenting what happens in the adolescent period your parenting your rules should have reasons and you should be able to communicate and convince the adolescent child before he or she really follows it now you can also understand that there are conflicts in this age between the parent and the child please again don't take them personally try to have a discussion instead of an argument look at this adolescent there's often they have a lot of choices and help them to make healthy choices so for example this adolescent loves cake but he is not very fond of fruits but you want him to love fruits and stay away from cake but telling him that five days in a week you can have plenty of fruits on the sixth day of the week have some fruit and a cake and probably on the seventh day if you love cake you can have a little bit more that is a simple way a simple way of negotiating with the adolescent child as i said before peers are extremely important for the young adolescent they love their peers but sometimes they may choose the wrong kind of peers please guide them how to choose peers who are honest who are sincere and who do not harm them and push them into negative peer pressure but positive peer pressure is great peers help them to perform well not only in academics but also extra academic activities like sports dance and music and yes there is a there is a change with the opposite sex which takes place a change in relationship please do not have any what can i say you know the usual things oh there is something up between a boy and girl they can also be a healthy relationship please teach them how to make healthy relationships not every boyfriend or girlfriend is in an emotionally intimate relationship it can just be a friend who is a boy or a friend who is a girl and let us encourage them to form healthy relationships at this age please remember to involve them in looking after their grandparents looking after their younger siblings and helping you at home because this will give you the opportunity to praise them and adolescents love positive strokes from their parents so your praise should not only be for their academic and extra academic achievements but also for their behavior their generosity their helping nature their honesty please remember to nurture these values as well let me share with you a little bit about the adolescent brain now you'll be surprised to know that in this period of life there is a lot of reconstruction of the brain that takes place the maximum size of the brain is at 7 years and the increased size of the brain is because of the nerve cells which are called neurons and there are more than 1 billion neurons in our brain and these nerve cells are connected to each other by connections which we call synapses now what happens in the adolescent period is that the brain reduces in size why is that the connections which are used the most persist for life while the connections which are not used simply disappear let me give you an example there's an adolescent when he gets angry he breaks things 
he even hits his younger brother or sister if he is not corrected in this age what will happen the synapses or the connections of aggressiveness will get hardwired for life and this adolescent will tend to be a very hot tempered adult but if you want to prevent such a thing if you teach this adolescent take deep breaths think before you speak don't react respond probably go and have a glass of cold water when you are angry think about the reasons why you are angry and then try to deal with those reasons if your teacher scolded you in the school doesn't mean that you have to come and break the tv screen at house think why did your teacher scold you and what you could do about it the moment you teach rational thinking to your adolescent those neurons those connections are going to become tight so this is a very impactful age this is the age when the brain is very very flexible and if we want to change behavior for good this is the time to act and so much is the power of parenting in this age that even if a child who is genetically predisposed to be aggressive if he is given the right kind of environment by the parent he will turn out to be as a very gentle human being to take this further like i said before the first sign of puberty or reproductive maturity setting in is the development of breasts in the girl and the enlargement of testes in the boy as such thing happens in the body there is a change which occurs in the brain that is the maturity of the center of emotions called the limbic system and this is the time when the adolescent becomes very very emotionally reactive for small things he starts crying for small things he gets angry and parents wonder what has happened to that sweet little boy that we had at the age of 8 years now he has become an angry young adolescent that is because his center of emotions are on a high and so are, so is his reward center adolescents want rewards in the form of appreciation from their parents from their teachers and from their friends they also feel happy when they achieve and when they achieve academically they feel very happy even sports music dance gives them what we call a dopamine kick dopamine is the neurotransmitter which is secreted in the reward center adolescents who do not get enough appreciation from their near and dear ones who are not involved in seeking healthy rewards in the form of extracurricular activities often resort to unhealthy rewards like speed driving drugs excessive eating excessive media usage sexual promiscuity because all these things they all stimulate the reward center what happens in the adolescent period when a child reaches 10th standard there is a tendency for parents to stop all co curricular activities and for an adolescent who is not doing well academically he feels very sad and he goes and falls for the unhealthy rewards another point to remember is the judgment center which controls the center of emotions and also the reward center only matures in the late 20s so until then the parents have to help the child in controlling his emotions and controlling his sensation for unhealthy rewards or sensation seeking behavior another point to remember is the cerebellum which is the coordination center of the brain which gives muscle balance and control only matures at the age of 19 years hence there should be no allowance of driving motorized vehicles before the age of 18 because the chances of road traffic accidents are very high it is against the normal development of the adolescent and it is against the law as well parents often give the keys of their vehicle to the adolescent but 
they usually land up in trouble. This is a functional MRI image of the brain, which shows what I said just before, that these are the blue areas which show maturity of the brain. And you can see the blue areas, the last part of the brain to mature is the prefrontal cortex, the control center of the brain. And it is only in the late 20s that the adolescent will be able to control his emotion. By the way, time management is also right here and so is working memory. And often parents grumble, my children make fantastic timetables, but they do not follow it because they are not still ready brain-wise to follow their timetables. You have to motivate them again and again and not really give up. Remember when they were small, so many times they fell down until they learned how to walk on their own. That is the kind of patience that you need while you are upbringing an adolescent. This patient came to me with these scratch marks made by a blade and I asked him what was the matter and he said, doctor, I'm not very good in studies. My friends dared me to do this and I did it. It was exciting. Such is the need for sensation seeking behavior at this age. This child was not good in studies. The parents had stopped his yoga classes and he was getting bullied in the school and he was feeling miserable just because he wanted to be, be a part of the peer group when his friends dared him to do so, cut his uh, forearm with a blade, he really did it. So my advice to the parents was to put him back into yoga. We did a psychoeducational assessment. We realized that he had a learning problem with the help of teachers and remedial educators. He was back on track. And after a few months, he was back in my clinic with a yoga cup and showing to tell me a yoga cup which he won in a competitive uh, 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 event. And he told me that this is the yoga asan which made him win the cup. So you can understand that the need for the adolescent for rewards, for being busy in activities which really give them rewards and happiness is so very important. It builds up their self-esteem. What about the parenting challenges? I know the pandemic has thrown a number of challenges. You two are lonely. You two are having fear of catching the infection. The, the future is so much uncertain for you. Let me share with you this case. A girl was brought by her father with, who was 16 years old with aggressive behavior since one year. When I talked to her, she told me, my mother gets mood swings, she gets rage attacks, she is very abusive, she also has episodes of intense sadness. When she talked to me, it was easy for me to diagnose that the mother had a bipolar disorder, which is a mental disorder, and when once the mother was referred to the psychiatrist and was on treatment, everything was fine at home. They were back to being a very harmonious family. So parents, please look after yourself. It is often said in air travel, please put on your oxygen mask first before helping others. So please take care of yourself. If you have any physical problem or a mental problem, please do seek help because that has an immense effect on the functioning of the child. And what does research say? Research says that adolescent parenting, in fact, does have an adverse effect on parents' mental health. Some of them do get depressed, anxious, have self-doubts. In fact, it is the lowest point in marital satisfaction. Also, we are sandwiched between two generations, our own parents and our adolescents. So it is really tough. So what should marriage, rewarding hobby, understand normative development and be positive and practice authoritative parenting. We'll be talking about it in just a moment. Please remember to take at least 15 minutes of me time every day for yourself. Be happy and I'm sure your family and your uh, your, your 
children at home would also be happy. And what's happening, you know, that most of in the form of grandparents, uncles and aunts. So the challenge of parenting falls totally on the parents. Also, westernization, individualism, uncensored, excessive media exposure, multiple choices, the tendency for immediate gratification and intense competition has thrown a lot of stressors on parents. And yes, I understand you need help. Do not hesitate to ask for help if you are not able to manage things on your own. Discussing with you a few nuts and bolts, it is often said that parenting is of four types. Let me just explain this to you with a real life incident which happens usually in the in the life of a parent. So you have you have told your child, your adolescent to come back at six o'clock. So as a parent, you are actually having a behavior control. You want your child to be back home by 6 p.m. So the child comes late and the child comes back at 8 o'clock. So the rule was coming at 6 and 8. What does the authoritarian parent or a tiger mom or dad do? As soon as the, what has been your responsiveness as a parent, it has been pretty low. The child starts crying, locks himself up in the room. So the consequence is not good. This child, if such authoritarian style of parenting continues, will become either a rebel or he will become a very meek child. What does a permissive parent do? The permissive parent has actually no rules, but is, has a very high warmth so the child comes home and the parent says i'm so happy to see you come and have some juice let's have some dinner what has happened here there are no guidelines the child is the boss and these are the children who will turn out to be spoiled brats and a burden to the society who are the uninvolved parents sadly there are some parents like that who don't even know when their child has come home and these are the children who often turn out to be juvenile delinquents and they get problem into uh, with the police and the law. The best type of parenting is the authoritative parenting. So the child comes home, you have a control here, you tell the child to come at six o'clock, you look at the clock and you ask the child what happened. The child says, Amma, I wanted to come at six o'clock, but today my friend had a fall from the cycle. He hurt himself and I had to take him back home and then we took him to the doctor. And that is the reason why I was late. So does that make you feel better? Definitely it does. So what have you done here? You have asked the child what happened. But remember, sometimes adolescents lie. So be sure to check with what the story is right or wrong. And remember, that is not spying, that is monitoring your child. There is a new type of parenting which has come up in the last few days. This is called the helicopter parenting or the snow plowing parenting. What do we want to do? We want to do everything for our children. We don't want them to face challenges. You have a difficult project, I will do it for you. You can't finish your homework, I will do it for you. You had a fight with your friend. I will speak to your friend for you. And these are the children who never learn how to handle stress in life. And when they grow older, they still continue to remain dependent on their parents. And in fact, this sets the pace for mental health disorder. And what about a helicopter parent? The helicopter parent is always after their child. Where did you go today? Oh, you went to your friend's house. Where are you going now? Oh, you're going to the toilet. What are you doing now? They are just suffocating child development. And both these parentings are a strict no-no. Allow your children to fail. Allow your children to get up. Allow your children to face challenges. If you allow them to do so now, remember, brain connections are fall, forming right now you will make them much more resilient. So you have to be remember to be a coach and cheerleader. Remember as a parent and you should do gender balanced parenting. Both boys and girls, 
should get equal opportunities and similar rules. Remember to monitor your children. Where, what, with whom are they and when do they go where. Extremely important to do both, both online and offline monitoring. Remember to discipline them. Give them a list of non-negotiable and negotiable rules. The, the two most important non-negotiable rules for all families is one, the number one driving before the age of 18. And I told you the reason why. The second is no drugs, not even a sip of alcohol, not even one cigarette smoke because drugs are known to damage the brain for life. And those children who start drugs at a younger age tend to be drug addicts when they grow up as adults. So please remember that is a non-negotiable rule. Cleaning the house can be made negotiable. If the child is not well at that time, he may not be able to clean the room. Remember to role model. Remember to appreciate good behavior. Be consistent. Give age appropriate punishment. The punishment should not be demeaning and the punishment should be decided before you implement it. So remember to respond and not to react. And of course, give unconditional love and be available. Don't tell the child if you score 100%, only then I'm going to love you. And if you score 50%, I will throw you out of the house. That is conditional love. And learn to effectively communicate with your child. The spelling of communication for adolescents is listening, L-I-S-T-E-N. So remember, we have two ears and one mouth, and there is a certain reason for that. We need to listen more and talk less. Of course, be a role model. Tell your children, do as I do, not do as I say. When I say do physical exercise and if I don't do any physical exercise no your child is never going to learn that look at this daughter of of a man who's really really worried my 17 year old daughter locked herself in a room for 12 hours after I slapped her in front of our friends for bunking college and going for a movie please remember you have to manage your anger well and as I told you about the brain you must if at all reprimand in private Please don't scold the child in public in front of the friends. The child is very emotionally hyperactive and has, does not have a control over the emotions. And if at any point of your child, time, the child says, I want to end my life, please take it seriously because the child may really do it. They don't have a mature control center. So what are the rules for direct verbal expression of anger? What should this parent have done in private? The first thing he should have said is, I came from the office today. While coming back from the office, I saw you at the cinema theater. And I knew that you had to be going for your tuition, but you were not there. And I felt really upset. Please don't say this. You never obey me. Don't go into the history. Stay in the present. Say exactly what you want the person to do. When you want to see a movie, let me know. We could arrange this movie with your friends over the weekend. Even I would like to join you if you permit me to do so. I would not want you to bunk your classes for seeing this movie. And if you do so, you will learn better. I will be happy and so will you be. So please don't go into the history, stick to the topic on hand. You're talking to the child and then don't say, you're not cut your hair for so many days, your hair is so shabby. Please don't move from one topic to the other. Stick to what you are telling the child. Say what happened, say how you feel, say exactly what you want the person to do and say why. And sometimes use humor. Humor is an excellent way to reach out to the adolescent. Look at this, 1990, he was fat, and the adolescent was flat, the tummy. But what happened in 2008, from there on, the TV has become flat and the adolescent has a fat tummy. So, but be careful that your humor is not demeaning. What should you be discussing with your adolescent? Talk to them about normal adolescent growth. Talk to them about healthy nutrition, sleep for at least eight, meditation. Talk to them about family values, discipline, rights, duties, responsibilities, and laws. 
tell them the age of sexual consent is actually 18 years and before that any sexual behavior can land you into trouble with the law talk to them about academics time management career choices life skills drugs sexuality media saving money also ensure annual health checkups and vaccination very very quickly healthy lifestyle tell them about the golden rules of nu nutrition play for 60 minutes per day tv viewing or that matter phone viewing it should be only restricted to around 30 minutes per day during weekdays it can extend to around 1 to 2 hours during weekends sleep for 8 to 9 hours teach them about the thali method if this is your thali half of your thali should have fruits and vegetables which are glow foods which give you a fantastic complexion remember for the adolescent body image is everything quarter of your plate should contain pulses and curds which are grow foods and the rest of the quarter should have cereals which give energy remember to take two to four glasses of milk and six to eight glasses of water tell them to take a balanced diet not to miss breakfast not to miss meals avoid junk food deworm once in 6 months and give iron tablet once a week to girls it's important so that they don't get anemic what are the school success mantras the school success mantras are not about all about studying but also about eating healthy playing and sleeping well ensuring regular school attendance study habits time management please teach them try to encourage their hobbies emphasize on putting in one's best and not on topping tell them exams are celebrations of learning they are not really stressful events show off to your teacher show off to us what you have learned over the years and that would motivate them encourage and support them and always have appropriate expectations look at these people who are so very famous this is thomas alva edison george bush gandhi ji Sachin Tendulkar, also Albert Einstein and Newton, they were never school toppers, but they persisted to study. So please do not equate poor school performance with with failure in life. Definitely not. And always remember to give unconditional love. The COVID nineteen stresses are huge for the adolescent. They are not able to meet their teachers. The family, like I said before, is. not very cooperated some of the times but on the other hand some of the times the family is great and many adolescents have really built strong bonds with the family they miss their friends they miss their school yes they are watching too much of media and they are also worried whether the community is really following wearing a mask social distancing all this is really troubling the adolescent and you all know adolescents better than what i do because you have a young adolescent at home right now adolescent sometimes they say i can't do it but i won't so how are you going to motivate the adolescent you have to use some unique techniques to motivate them look at this adolescent running on a treadmill she's only running because she knows that there's a cake at the other end so your motivation should not be like a wrestling match a father is forcing his adolescent to study in fact it should be like a dance you have to collaborate with them you have to understand them and you have whatever rule you want to make them follow you have to convince them to do so so what is the stress management toolbox for adolescents it includes thinking or finding the solutions to your problem following a healthy lifestyle completing your vaccination prayer meditation being on top of your studies having a connect with the nature having a connect with parents respecting elders having social distancing yes but don't make it really physical distancing is the correct word forming a connect with parents online and having gratitude so there are so many things which you can share with your adolescents to beat the stress i cannot re emphasize the importance of exercise exercise is a fantastic stress buster but at home itself you can do a whole lot not only a stress buster what this slide shows is that after exercise the circulation in the memory center of the brain increases and hence exercise is a must talking about life skills 
They often tell about life skills with this thirsty crow story. Tell the adolescent, don't give up on your stressors. Don't give up on life. Remember what did this thirsty crow do? It was, it thought it was really special. It coped with his stress and emotions, used his creative and critical thinking, thought of multiple solutions to the problem and solved his problem. So remember in life, sometimes you don't need to really give up. There are some solutions which you will think about yourself and some you will need with help of others by having effective communication, empathy and interpersonal relationships. We all know Prime Minister Modi and Barack Obama had a very difficult childhood. By using life skills, by improving their emotional and social quotient, they could fight these, all these adversities. So as a parent, what do you need to do during this kind of life? You must understand normative development. You must respect autonomy of the adolescent. Educate the adolescent and listen actively. This make a routine, but that should be very flexible routine. Allow them to go online for recreation after they have spent time in their study. Make it reasonable. Do not totally ban it. Make it reasonable, say for 30 minutes, but ensure that they study, they have adequate exercise and they sleep well. Involve the teens in setting up online and family and peer meetings. Brainstorm Corona combating ideas. They love their creativity. Remember to have fun with them and keep the connect. Watch for warning signs. And involve them in establishing grandparents. Coming to media, remember to keep them safe on media. Tell them about the digital footprint. Tell them that whatever they post on the media cannot be erased. It is not private. If they think they're hiding something from the whole world, they cannot hide. It is a very public environment. Tell them to have boundaries. If somebody speaks badly to them, post something badly to them, tell them to tell you. And also tell them not to trouble anybody online. Keep the channels of communication always open. Coming to my last case, this was a child who actually got pregnant while her parents kept her home for preparing for her 12th standard exam. Now, it is very important for us to understand and teach the child about sexuality. So what is actually sexuality education for young adolescents? You must understand that attractions are fairly common. You must talk to the adolescent about periods and wet dreams. What I told you before, you must talk to them about safe versus unsafe touch. Tell them what is the difference between romance and love. The romance part of it is very selfish, while the love part of it is mutually enhancing. I often tell the adolescent, your brain is not fully developed right now. A person who looks like a hero today may turn out to be a villain later. You want, you're emotionally attached to that person, wait. Wait for him to fully mature and then make a commitment. Teach your boys and girls both to respect boundaries. Teach them about consent, very important. Talk to them about physical intimacy, the risks versus benefits. Remember, we don't want adolescent to hate sexual intercourse. We just want to tell them that there's the right time and the right age and the right environment. It should be mutually enhancing because that's how the world will continue. It is not that we want to tell them that you have to hate sexual intercourse at all. Please express your parental values and expectations clearly. Talk to them about the laws, consent, age of marriage, and even cyber laws. Extremely important to talk to them. And when are you going to take them to the mental health professional? If at any time you suspect that your adolescent is using drugs, has got sexually abused, is becoming very violent, is giving suicide threats, you have to consult a mental health professional or your pediatrician immediately. An adolescent who loves badminton suddenly stops playing badminton. An adolescent who was very calm suddenly becomes very agitated. And this behavior lasts for more than two weeks. It is a sign of mental disorder. It could be a sign of cyberbullying. It could even be a sign of sexual abuse. So please take care. 
if there is a dramatic change in your relationship with your teenager for more than two weeks, you must consult a pediatrician or a mental health professional. I will share with you these two cases. This parent noticed a change in handwriting and the teacher kept scolding this child and the, they got the child to me. And when I talked to the child, I found that this was the first sign of psychosis setting in. This child is now on treatment for schizophrenia and is doing very well. This mother got the pictures of her adolescent, which this, uh, this adolescent had a drawing book and she was very scared. And she was the one who actually picked up suicidal ideation and we managed this uh, child very well. The child had depression and after treatment, the child was absolutely fine. And this child is now a chartered accountant. So parents, you have to be very vigilant. If you can get the children early to us, the results are very satisfying both for you and for us. Needless to say, the best thing to spend on your children is your time. Sometimes we are so concerned about giving our children what we never had growing up. We neglect to give them what we did have growing up. And you will all agree with me that what our extended family and our close family did when we were small was that they gave us their time. So time is really the best investment that you can do for the upbringing of your child. Remember, adolescents are vulnerable. They need special care and you have immense opportunities to change the world with the adolescents under your care. Effective communication, positive discipline, monitoring and bonding are a must. Be good role models. Develop a strong value system in the adolescent. And of course, don't forget annual health checkup and immunization. During COVID-19 times, flu vaccination and pneumonia vaccination are extremely important for your adolescent. And if your adolescent has not had that, please make sure that they have this vaccination because influenza and pneumonia are known to occur with COVID-19 infection, though we still don't have a vaccination for COVID-19. So remember to give roots to your children and wings to your child to achieve their ambition. Sadly, once you have done that, you would be left alone. And definitely there would be the empty nest syndrome when they go on with their lives. But that talk is for another session. Thank you very much for a very patient hearing. Thank you, Dr for such an informative session. Doctor, we have few questions. Preeti Suta will be taking it up on behalf of the participants. Preeti, over to you. Thank you, Manila ma'am. Uh, thank you, Dr. Galagali. That was an amazing session, I would say. And uh, we are so happy to be hosting on uh, this very special day, hosting you and hosting our lovely students, as well as our dear parents, here on this platform, I think it has given us an you know, opportunity to come together, all of us who are so concerned with the well-being of our children. Uh, there are a few questions that did come up. Some of them definitely were answered by you. Um, you've given lovely suggestions about the toolbox for the students and for the parents. And I'm sure they will really find it very, very handy. And we can see that from uh, the lovely comments that are coming in. I did get a few queries. Uh, some of them may be repetitive, but for the sake of those of them who joined in late, maybe you could still consider taking them up. So the first one that came up was, my child is getting more and more angry for no reason, especially after he has entered the adolescent age. Anything as parents that we can do at our end? Okay. So I, I would just say, take a deep breath, take three mindful <laughs> breaths, first thing that you need to do when your child gets angry. It's very important that you role model anger management to your child. So if a child is very angry, at that point of time, you can say, uh, can you tell me what has triggered or why are you angry? Sometimes the child will not answer at that point and they will just keep on babbling sometimes. You can just say, I, I'm not able to understand the reason for your anger. I'm in the other room. Once you feel like talking to me, please come and we will talk over it together. 
Now, because you said a very important point here, he is angry for no reason. I I feel that always anger is backed with a reason, but we fail to understand that reason. Now we have to find out the reason. Having said that, sometimes some adolescents who have a mental disorder may get angry for which there is actually no reason. But those cases are very, very few. And if once in a while the adolescent is angry without any reason, that's quite okay. We also get angry without any reason sometimes. And we don't want to share our reason with the other person, right? So many times it happens with us also. So if it's in once in a while without any reason, that's okay. But most of the times allow the adolescent to cool down and then he would talk. So what generally parents do is you're getting very angry, you're behaving so badly. I don't want to talk to you for the whole day. And maybe some parents don't even talk for days together. Please don't do that. Mm -hmm. I always tell parents at the end of the day, mm -hmm. even if your adolescent has behaved very badly, you go and give him or her a hug and say, I did not like your behavior today and we will talk about it tomorrow. You will be able to sleep peacefully and the adolescent will also sleep peacefully. I'm sure when you don't talk to your adolescent for days together, neither are you sleeping well and neither is your adolescent. Thank you, doctor. I think, yes, all of us need to temper our emotions to deal with it very, very, you know, intelligently. And uh, another question that's come in is how to understand if the child is feeling insecure. Sometimes children are not expressing, but how does a parent tend to understand? Yes, so, so there may be some, uh, what we say, telltale signs a child is feeling insecure. So uh, again, I'll come back to the emotional center, even when it goes for anger and even when it goes for insecurity. Please always remember that the prefrontal cortex, the control center of emotions is not yet mature. So don't expect your child who's probably taller than you, he looks bigger than you even now, to really have a control on the emotions. Please remember that will only come in the late 20s. And when you have that empathy for the child, I'm sure you will be more helpful. Now, the telltale signs of insecurity are the child may be clinging to you too much. Will say, I don't want to go to my room. I want to sleep with you. Right? That will be one sign. Another sign could be that the child is nail biting all the time. That could be one of the signs the child is feeling insecure. Or the child is saying, Amma, don't go to work. Appa, I don't want you to go to work. Something will happen to you. Or something will happen to me. So those are the signs of insecurity. And remember, so there's something known as an attachment pattern for every child and a parent. And that is built in the first two years of life. And that is the importance of them having a stable caregiver or a stable parenting figure at that point. When as a small child in the first two years, if a child has been, the parent has not been available for the child or the parent figure has not been there for the child, this is the child who will be very insecure because the image of the world that he has formed in his mind is when I cry, when I fall down, nobody is there for me. So he's not feeling safe in that and that, with that kind of a mindset, he becomes an insecure adolescent. So the first two years, when a child falls down, when a child is in trouble, if there is a mother who is there or a mother figure who is there, who gives him security, the child feels secure. Having said that, even insecure attachments, in the adolescent period, I said the brain is very flexible. Even if the child has had an insecure attachment, if you can give security, be there for the child, be available for the child. The child may not say immediately, but say, I'm in the other room. I am there for you. You can come and share with me. Sometimes they may not like to share with you. They might like to share with the grandparents. They might like to share with the uncles and aunts. As long as it is a trustworthy adult, don't be too touchy about it. Don't take it personally. You can definitely allow them to share that. I think being available is the best way of making the child secure. Thank you, doctor. Definitely time plays a big role. And as you said, listening is very, very important. Uh, the other question that has come in is how to make the children understand uh, the importance of physical activity. I think you did point out, but again, if you could repeat for some of the students who joined in late. Yes. 
so uh, so you know uh, when when it comes to what we call motivation or motivating the child to do physical activity we will have our own goals like for physical activity a child is very concerned about the complexion and saying i'm not looking so good so you tell when you when, when you are going to do physical activity there's going to be more blood going onto your uh, onto your face and you're going to get the glow on your face another child will think oh i've become fat okay so that again will be relevant so be careful that whatever counsel you give to your child it should be relevant to that particular child for example a child who says i'm not doing very well in studies i'm forgetting everything you can give them the signs when you exercise your more blood is going into your memory center so if you can make your counseling very specific to the child you you are selling the product what is the unique selling proposition that is what you need to tap on instead of generally saying physical activity is good for physical health mental health don't say something general like that adolescent is not impressed with that but how will it make a difference to me what is it in it for me is what you have to really catch on to and if you can catch on it very well fine if you cannot you can take him to the doctor who will probably give many more reasons for physical activity which will probably make more sense to your adolescent and once again i should say role model if they want them to do physical activity please ensure that you are physically active yourself make the physical activity fun you know that is the key let us dance together let us play i will catch you run and i will catch you make it fun adolescents love fun because that stimulates their reward center so many people have treadmills at home they use it for hanging clothes let the parent get out of the treadmill <laughs> take out all those clothes get the parent on the treadmill and say i am going to do 20 minutes and next it's your turn and let's see how many calories we have burned make it a healthy competition they love to defeat you just like i can just, just i can just vouch for it that this is going to work thank you doctor thank you again there's one more query in the chat box that is also similar to what we received they want to know how to reduce the mobile time 30 minutes of tv doesn't seem to work at all i totally uh, agree with you with the children have no other activity they feel and though a lot of ideas are available on the internet the kid does not want to try anything new yes so i, I must also say you know uh, having you are having said that online gaming you know they love games and it has in fact become the new psychiatric association has in fact included it as a addiction disorder gaming addiction now you should understand why the child is going on the net i'll tell you one uh, case there was a, a kid who was not doing well in his studies and he, i could convince him that mobiles are the one which is really interfering with his study time and in front of me he said okay doctor i am fully convinced i am going to give this mobile to my mother and until my board exams are over and this was probably in january the board exams were due in march until my board, board exams are over i'm not going to touch the mobile i was really happy that my counseling session has been so effective the next moment after he gave the mobile he said doctor i want to share this with you in front of my mother do you know when you take away the mobile from me you are taking away my only source of happiness my parents fight such a lot in the house that our house is a living hell and when i go to the mobile i play games i feel happy so please understand why is the child so much going on to the mobile is there something in the family environment or is it something which is not which is not really stimulating his reward center in a healthy way that he has to go for unhealthy rewards so keep a watch on that that is number one thing the second thing is you can negotiate the time on the mobile when i said the tv time to 30 minutes what i do is i sit down with the child and i said okay how many times do you how many hours do you want to sleep what should be your study time what is your school time and how many hours is left please sit down and do this exercise with your child don't make a time table for the child allow the child to make his own time table make a time table on weekdays make a time table on holidays allow the child to be online for a little bit more time but please remember for online safety please that's extremely important so what i want you to do is to partner with your child to really 
understand what should be the screen time. Now, at present, we say the screen time should not interfere with sleep of one hour, study time for at least one hour, one hour of family interaction, and then you decide what should be the screen time. Do it together. And just for everybody's information, there is a website for forming a family media plan. The American Academy of Pediatrics is so free. All can access it. In fact, you can form a media plan not only for your adolescent, but for yourself also. So it can be a family media plan. Please try it out. When you partner with your adolescent, instead of ordering him, he may listen to you more. Thank you, doctor. Uh, here's one query from a student saying that they get very nervous and stressed during the examination time. And how can they be more relaxed about it? Okay. Okay. So I, I, I said the first thing, you know, it is to work on your thoughts. So we say there's a connection between thoughts, feelings, and behavior, right? So if the thought is in your mind at that particular time, I've already, I've always done badly. I'm going to do badly today right? If that is the thought, you're going to feel really low at that time. Your feeling is going to be really low. And what will be your behavior? The behavior may be you start getting tremors. You may even get nausea. You might start getting stomachache and you get really, really, you don't feel like going for the exam. Instead, if your thought is, I have studied regularly, provided you have studied regularly, that is what is important. I have studied regularly. Yes, I have not done well the last time, but I am going to try my best. I'm going to do this and I may not top the class. What can be the worst scenario? I won't fail. Maybe I'll get 50%. That's okay. I'll try to do whatever I can. And when you think like that, your feeling will be more optimistic and your behavior, you will feel much more relaxed. You could also do some quick relaxation techniques. So one could be, Clench your fist tightly just before an exam and say, close your eyes and say, all the tension is in my hand and I am going to fight it out. And slowly open your hands and say, chill, relax, cool, chill. You will feel better. Another way of doing it is one hand on the chest, one hand on the abdomen. Take a deep breath in, filling up your abdomen like a balloon. So what do you do? You pull down your diaphragm. When you pull down your diaphragm, more oxygen goes in. Also, when you pull down your diaphragm, the parasympathetic system, which is the relaxation system of the brain gets into function and you relax. So take a deep breath in, get your tummy out. And when you breathe out, take out all the air and let your tummy go in. A lot of the time, what we do the breathing, we do it from the chest. <sighs> And that is not a good way to breathe. You have to practice to do abdominal breathing. So if you take these three abdominal breaths, research has shown this is one of the most powerful ways to combat exam stress. So I've told you two quick relaxation techniques. I've told you how to deal with your thought and always think exam is a celebration time. It's like Deepavali when we you know, light up our house. Deepavali is just around the corner. So the same way during exams, you're lighting up your brain and you are going to put your best performance. It is show off time for you. When you think it like that and you do your studies regularly, I think there will be absolutely no stress. Remember, whatever you are weak at, remember to work on your weaknesses at least two to three weeks before the exam. Have a look at that and take. don't hesitate to seek help. Seek help from your teachers, seek help from your parents, even seek help from your friends. Don't hesitate. And once all your queries are cleared, I think you will do great and all the best to you. Thank you so much, doctor, yeah. and uh, uh, for a wonderful, wonderful session. And I'm sure a lot of practical input for the parents as well as the students. And uh, over to you, Manila, ma'am, now. Yeah, thank you so much, doctor. It was such a oh, lovely yeah. session. I'm feel, I feel all the participants were feeling a self relief now. They know if they have any problem, they can reach out to doctor pretty very soon. <laughs> so all the participants, in case you want to take any professional help for either for your own children, for yourself, for anybody, please reach out to us. We can share the contact details of Dr. Uh, Preeti Galagali with you. 
And uh, thank you, Doctor, on behalf of the management at UPS Bangalore East. Thank you so much for this wonderful session. So thank you, all participants. I have two documents which I'm going to share with you on stress management. I would okay. like you to please share with all the participants. Perfect. I will do that. Yeah. Thank, thank you so much, Doctor. Thank, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you so much. Yeah. Bye.